Hey, this is Robert Quimby, and I'm going to tell you about GitHub. So GitHub uh, has two parts. There's a Git, the G-I-T part, and there's the Hub part. Uh, so the Git part is actually a set of software that does version control. So this is something you might want to use if, for example, you're writing a document. It could be any kind of document. It could be some code that you're writing, or it could be some paper that you're working on. Uh, and you want to keep track of different versions of that. You're going to have version 1, version 2, version 3. You want to make sure that if you make a mistake in version 5, you can always go back to version 4, or version 3, or whatever. Um, so that's what Git is for. Git is just software that makes that possible. Um, at some point, you might actually want to share this document with somebody else. So one thing you can do is you could send it to them directly, but maybe you have a whole bunch of people and you're all working together. And so at this point, it makes more sense to have a hub, a central repository where you can send everything and everybody can send their, their changes and their corrections to this one place. And that'll simplify the process of deciding, okay, what, what changes are we gonna accept and incorporate into the main version? So that's where the hub comes into GitHub. So GitHub itself, I'm talking about GitHub, I'm talking about this web page. Uh, but to the, the underlying software that makes this work is, is Git. So let's talk a little bit about GitHub and how you can use it. So the first thing you need to know in using GitHub is that different projects are gonna be st stored in what are called repositories. So a repository is, you can just think of it as a folder. It's just a folder or a directory, just where you're gonna keep your stuff. So before you get into anything, you gotta create uh, one of these repositories. You gotta have a place to put your stuff. So you can do this if you go uh, log into your, your GitHub page. Anywhere upper right, there's gonna be this little plus sign here, and you can click on that, and it'll say new repository, you can click on that. And let's just go ahead and create a new repository. So go ahead and, and make your own repository along with me so you can play along here. Uh, all you have to do is fill out this simple little form. Uh, so I'm gonna give this repository a name. You can give it whatever name you want. I'm gonna give it a very clever name. That'll be my name. Do whatever you want. You can put a description if you want. I don't need to do that. Uh, and then we have this choice here. We can make this repository something that anyone on the internet can see. You can make it public. Or we can say, nope, not ready for that. I only wanna, I wanna keep it just to a limited number of people. Maybe just me, maybe just a few of my friends. So I'm gonna make this repository private. And then I recommend adding this readme file. This is just gonna be a file that goes into the repository that provides a guide. What, what is this repository about? What, what is it for? How do we use it? You put that kind of information in a readme file. So once you've done that, you can add uh, ignore files and licenses, but you don't have to. You can create this repository. And what that will do is it'll create it into your account. So you now I have this clever name uh, repository sitting on GitHub. So this is all great, so I can actually point other people on the internet to this now, and I could, you know, it's private, so I have to give them permission to look at this, but I can. And then they can put files in here, and we can store things, and we can make different versions. What I want to do now is show you how you might actually use this when you're writing some code. So maybe you're putting together some software, and you want to have different versions of it, and you want to store that on GitHub. So what we're going to do is I'm actually going to go over to a terminal. So this is just a basic Unix terminal. It happens to be running on a, on a Jupyter Hub, but that's not important. It's just a regular Linux uh, terminal. And I've got this directory here called GitHub. And what I want to do is I want to make a copy of this repository on my computer. So on this computer here, I want to take a copy of that from GitHub and, and stick it on that computer. So the first thing you can do is you can just type git uh, help, dash dash help maybe. And it'll tell you all the things that Git can do. And it actually has a pr some pretty good um, descriptions of what it can do here. So the basic idea here is, you know, it's got these nice little breakdowns of different things you might do with it. You can clone a repository. So if there's a repository that exists somewhere and you want to make a copy of that on your own computer, you use the clone command. You can also create one from scratch if you want, but you almost are never going to do this. And I, I recommend you just create it on GitHub. It makes your life a little easier. Um, and then once you've have this repository, you can add files to it, you can delete them, you can um, look at how things have changed over time, uh, and you can actually make commitments. So once you've made a, a file, it's not automatically stay, uh, stored. You have to say, I want to take this file in this particular version, and we're gonna call that version one, version two, whatever. We need to, to create a specific version. Um, and so you do that by committing it. And then when you've done that, you've committed it into your computer, but GitHub doesn't know anything about it. So you're gonna to want to uh, maybe push that onto GitHub. So I'm gonna go through this whole process here. I'm gonna show you how to do all that. 
But we're going to start with a very basic step of just cloning this repository that we've made. So here's my clever name repository. And there's this little green button here. It says code. If you look on that, you click on that, it has this URL right here. And this is actually the name of the repository on GitHub. So you can copy that. This little uh, icon here will copy that. It's copied now. And I can go back to my, my Linux session. And I can type in here, I can type git, G-I-T again, clone. And then I can just paste the name of that file from GitHub. And when I hit enter here, what it's going to do is it's going to go to GitHub and it's going to pull that file over. Uh, actually, it's going to try to, but it's going to ask you for your credentials first. So this is a pr uh, private repository. So it's going to say, hey, who, who are you? You got to have permission to log on here. Now, this is something that's a little bit confusing. So you're going to need to put your username in here and then it's going to ask for a password, but you don't give it your password. What you actually are going to give it is what's called a token. So there's some nice description on the GitHub page here. and I'll put a, a link to this in the notebook that accompanies this. Um, so you can go, go to this uh, keeping your account and data secure, creating a personal access token page on GitHub and read all about why you might uh, want to create a token. And there's a pretty good description here, but we're just going to go through that real quick uh, to get you up to speed. So I'm going to go ahead and create a personal access token in the classic mode. Uh, the new fancy one is this fine grain personal access token, uh, and that's perfectly fine. Uh, and, and maybe you even should go through that. There might be a better way to do it. But for now, I'm going to use the classic one just because it's a little zippier, a little faster for, for just purely demonstrating, which is what I'm doing here. So it gives you the instructions on how to do this. And the main thing is you're going to want to go to your settings. You want to go to the developer settings. You're going to click on personal access tokens, and you're going to generate a token. So this will be done on GitHub, and it'll give you this long string of numbers. It's going to look something like, let's see where I go to it. There it is. Something like this. It's going to start with GHP underscore and then a whole bunch of characters. And you're going to take that, and that's going to be your password when it asks for it here when you're trying to connect from your command line. Okay, so let's go ahead and do this. So what we want to do is we go again uh, up to the upper right, and then we'll look on our little personal icon here and click on that. Go down to settings. And then we have to scroll here on the left all the way down, developer settings. And then we go to personal access tokens. And then we have our choice. I'm going to go with classic. And we can generate a new token. And again, we're going to do classic. OK. So it might ask for your password. This is your regular password for GitHub. So you just put that in. And once you've logged in with your password, now you can create your token. So you can create some note here to explain what it's for. Just again, this is just for your purposes. So I'm just going to put uh, for testing here. You can maybe put a better pass, better uh, reminder there what it is. And you can say when you want it to expire. Uh, there is an option that it never expires. You might want to consider that. Um, or you want to put some maybe the length of a semester or something like that. And then you need to define what you want to be able to do with this token. So what parts of GitHub do you want to interact with? And for what we're going to do right now, all we need is this repo access. We want to be able to connect to that repository on GitHub and pull information to our computer and then to push information back. So that's all we need to do. And then so we can just scroll down here and we can create that token. And here it is. So obviously, I'm not going to give you this token. I'm going to take this token and I'm going to delete it very shortly. But what you need to know, and it tells you right here, make sure to copy your personal access token now. You won't be able to see it again. This is true. I have two other tokens here, and you notice that you can't see that, that token. It just says there's a token. And you can delete those anytime. But if you want to connect now on GitHub, you need this long string. So write this down, save it somewhere. Uh, you can copy it here. And now we can do the login. So I'm going to put my, my username here on GitHub. And I'm going to paste in that token. So I just did it. Now, if you look, nothing seems to have happened. That's how this is going to work. So there, there's not going to be little asterisks hiding your password. And it's not going to show your, your, your password or your token. It's just going to do nothing, apparently. But when you hit Enter, it should say, hey, OK, I accept your password, your token. And look what it did. It actually um, went to GitHub, and it found that repository, and it made a copy and put it right here. So let's see what that looks like. If I type ls here in my Unix session, 
I see now I have this folder called Clever Name. And so I can CD into that. And in there we have that readme file that we, we made before. So I can use less and just take a look at that. And we see that there is just this. It has this hash, clever name, and that's it. There's nothing really exciting in there. And I can go back to my repository. And here we have it. We have our, our clever name repository on GitHub. And again, this is the readme file here. That's what's in there. So we've done the basic thing here. We've created a repository, and now we have the ability to have a copy of it on GitHub and a copy of it on a different computer. Now, the key thing to note is that when you make a change on one of those sides, either on GitHub or on your computer, it doesn't automatically make that change on the other system. So let's check this out right now. So this readme file here, this is a little pencil icon here. We can actually edit this. So let's go ahead and do that. We'll click on that icon there. And we're going to say, we can just write some text here. Um, this is a change to the readme file. It's readme.md, which stands for markdown file. And then we can go ahead and just scroll down here and we'll commit those changes. And what this does is it creates a new version of the readme file. So we have the original readme file. I clicked on that and now there's a newer version. All right, it still kept the old version. The old version is still stored. But now when we look here at this readme file, we can say this is a change to the readme file. We have that, that modified text there. Now, if I go back here and I look at that readme file again, it hasn't had that change yet. No, no changes have been made on this computer. It's only happened on GitHub. If we want to take what's on GitHub and see that updated on our computer, we have to do a git pull command. That'll take what's on GitHub and it'll pull over and it'll figure out, okay, there's been some changes to this file and it'll update it. So what we need to do here is uh, git pull command. Now at this point, it's gonna ask you for your password again. So this is gonna get annoying, so I wanna show you a little trick you can do. So first thing we gotta do is we gotta put in our, our username. Then I'm gonna paste that token, that same token I had before. And you can see what it did. You gotta read through here. It went to the remote computer, that's GitHub, and it said, hey, there's been a, a change. So we're gonna grab that change. That's in this readme file here. We've made a few little changes. One, one file changed, there's some assertions and deletion. And it copied that over, and now we have, if we look locally, um, we can see the file here has now been updated. So we can see that updated text to the readme file. Now I was gonna show you, you can actually execute a command at this point to store your token locally on this computer so that you don't have to type that password in again, which uh, might be a, a good idea. So I'm gonna use this command. So the command is git, G-I-T, config, C-O-N-F-I-G, dash, dash, global. And then we're gonna type credential.helper. And after that, we're gonna write the command store, S-T-O-R-E. And this will save that token onto this computer. So now, if I wanna do another change, if I wanna move a file from my computer to GitHub or from GitHub back, it has the credentials it already needs and it won't ask me again. So let's go ahead and do that. So right now, we have just this one little readme file. Let's create a new file. Uh, I'll, I'll just call it some file. Um, and so what actually what I'm going to do is I'm going to use the echo command. And I can just type something. And I'll use this redirect here. So this is Unix command here. That I'll, if you just type echo like this, it'll just print out something. It'll print out whatever you have in quotes here. I'm going to use up arrow and I'm going to use this greater than sign that's going to redirect the output instead of printing it out here. I'm just going to save it to a file. I'll call it my file. Txt. And now we can see, if I type ls, we've got my file.txt. And if we look inside that file, you can see that it has this word something, which is all we put in here. Okay, just a trivial example here, just to create a file, just to give you the basic idea of how this works. So now, again, if we go back to our uh, GitHub page and we, we reload this page, it only has a readme file. We haven't told it to take 
the version that we have on our computer and to move it over there. To do this, there's a couple things we have to do. First thing we have to do is we have to add this new file to our repository. So we're gonna use the command uh, git add, and then we'll say the name of the file we wanna to add to our repository, like that, and now it's added it. And if we are happy with the version that we have and we wanna make a commitment to the repository, we wanna say, okay, this is gonna be version zero for this file. We can do a git commit command. And after git commit, you wanna type a hyphen and an M because we're gonna make a comment here. And in quotes, you're gonna put anything you want. I'm gonna say added my file. It's gonna go in quotes. You'll see where this comes in in just a second. When you put anything you want there, just a comment for you. So I've done that and you can see, ah, it's asking me, who are you? You're trying to do something and you haven't told it who you are. So we need to run these commands here. So I'm gonna copy this. I'll paste it there. So it's saying, enter your email address. And this is just done so that uh, you can keep track of, of who's made changes to what. So this is just identifying information here. So I'll give the inf info there, and then I gotta tell it my name. So I'll cut and paste that, and I'll say my name is Robert Quimby. And now, if I do this command, the git commit, there we go. So now it's changed this file, it's inserted into this repo, and it's done. Now, what does it actually do? If we look here, we just see those two files. But if we do ls-a, you'll see that there's another directory here, .git. So we can cd into .git. And if we look at this, we can see it has all these different files in here. And this is actually where all the different versions are stored. So this is a, a folder that just holds all those different versions and it keeps them together in a very convenient pack. It keeps just differences so it doesn't you know, grow every time you make a small change to a file. It doesn't make a new copy of it. It just says, oh, just a little tweak here. So it's a very efficient way of doing that. But all this here has is everything that Git, the command GIT, needs to figure out, okay, where on GitHub is the corresponding repository? And that lets you move things from your computer to GitHub and vice versa with just simple commands. You don't have to tell it every time, go to this repository on GitHub. You just say git pull and it does. So let's go back. And we've done our git add. So we've added this file. We've said, hey, we made changes to this and we want to keep track of that. We added it and we've committed it. It still doesn't exist on GitHub though. Again, I can reload this page. It's still not there. There's one more thing we got to do and that is to push it. So we're gonna use git push and that'll take the file locally and push it up to GitHub. So there we go. So it found this file and it moved it over to, to GitHub. And if we check on GitHub now, if I reload this page, there we go, there's my file. And we can just click on that, take a look, and just has this word something in here. So hopefully this gives you some idea of what you can do with GitHub. Uh, of course, there's a lot more that you can do with it. So I do suggest going onto GitHub and looking at the different uh, tutorials that they have available. Git is a very handy system for keeping track of your files and GitHub is a nice way to store your information in the cloud so you don't have to worry about what happens on your computer. You can keep different versions of a file too. Uh, so there's a lot you can do with it. So go out and figure that out and enjoy.